also. Uh, so hello everyone and good afternoon, good morning. Um, my name is Nir, like I said, and today we have a very interesting lecture from uh, Dr. Shula Mula. And before we get started, and I will uh, uh, tell you a little bit about uh, Shula and about the lecture, Marla wanted to say a couple of things, right? So Marla, yeah. please go ahead. So I'm, I'm here to um, thank Hatagid for sponsoring this program for us and organizing a three-part lecture series. Um, most of you know me, but I'm the director for Skilled Volunteers for Israel. And in June 2020, we launched the English Biyachad, a virtual tutoring program once we could no longer come to Israel, travel and volunteer. And we work primarily with Ethiopian Israelis who are seeking to improve English fluency and confidence, partnering with several organizations that give us students um, who are trying to improve their economic mobility and um, professional um, career paths. And we've been able to work with over 150 tutors and almost 200 Israelis since last June. And as I um, was coming on today, I couldn't help but refrain from reflecting that yesterday in the United States marked the one year anniversary of the murder of George Floyd, a black American. And we know that racism in the US is a completely different history than that of um, Israel and the Ethiopians. But we are more aware, I think, our consciousness has been erased by what's been going on, at least in the United States. And the opportunity to tutor Ethiopian Israelis is a privilege, actually, has opened doors for us into Israeli society that were, for most of us, new. Um, and the deepening connections between our tutors and our students have really made us hungry to learn more about the Ethiopian Israeli story. So um, our tutors, many of them are online. We invited Artsenu, the reform movement, um, which is very involved in social justice work in Israel as well to join us. And so today is the first of three opportunities that we have to listen to three Israelis who will share their stories, their personal experience and their professional perspective on the Ethiopian Israeli story. So Nir, thank you. And please welcome today's lecture. Dr. Shula Mula. Thank you, Maula. And in uh, those opportunity, I want to thank you also for the collaboration and uh, for uh, the contact that you uh, made with us. Uh, it's very uh, unique uh, in my behalf to do this uh, lecture and uh, this uh, collaboration and this lecture. I think it's very, very important. And so today's lecture, like uh, Maula said, is Dr. Shula Mula. He, she's completed her PhD in the Department of Communication at the Ben Gurion University of the Negev. Dr. Mula is a civil and human rights activist. The name of the lecture today is I'm Completely Ordinary Efforts of Belonging of Ethiopian Origin Israeli Citizen into the Israeli Society. Shula. Not on mute. Okay, <laughs> again, I said to Daraba. Uh, English Bayahad is really important um, because you know I'm, I have been struggle with this language for more than 25 years. So keep going. Uh, yeah, I uh, Neil, I a little bit changed the the focus of the uh, of the presentation, but still will be very interesting. <laughs> uh, Thank you for coming and thank you, Nir, for uh, having me here. I mean, virtually. Uh, I'm always happy uh, for this kind of opportunities when I can share my insights regarding our uh, reality here uh, in Israel. I understand that I am the first person that you meet in your learning uh, sessions regarding our community. And I want to tell you that in my part today, we'll focus on the challenge. And I do invite you guys to open your mind and your heart. Uh, our challenges, I mean, our community challenges have very, very deep roots in the perception 
of the state of Israel about us, about Israel. המנורה מעלייך מאוד מאוד מסנזרת אותך. אז אם יש לך אפשרות לזוז טיפה, לא פחות. זה המנורה הזאת, הגדולה, נכון? כן, כן. I, I told Shula that is something is in the light uh, in the room is... Uh, um, the most quiet corner I found in my house. <laughs> I don't know what to do. No, it's okay. I think that maybe... No, it's okay. They see you, it's not that they see you. It's just a little bit of a sunver, but it's okay. No, I'm not a sunver, it's me. You're not a sunver. I'm staying here. I'm really, I mean... Wait, wait, maybe like that? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Yeah, now it's better. Okay. Our challenges have, I told you, yeah, but it's so important, I want to repeat it, very deep roots in the perception of the state of Israel about the community, about us. I don't know if any of you saw the film that was screened this week on the Kane Hadisri, the national TV channel, on prime time two days or three days ago. The film is called Without Land by Alamork and Kobe Davidian. I find it. The film shows that the state of Israel was and still uh, is against our aliyah. The film shows the, uh, the strong struggle of our activists in the 70s, 80s, and also in the 90s. And the state of Israel refused to let us realize our rights to return to Eretz Israel. When I watch, when I watch the movie, and hear things I already know, it still gets my heart, my heart broken. What's good about the film is the fact that uh, suddenly our leaders get the opportunity, to, the opportunity to be seen and heard. Now they are starting to get the recognition, at least from us, from the community and our other supporters. For years, the well-known narrative in Israel is how Israel saved us from Sudan, from Ethiopia. This is true, but not the whole story, just part of it. You know what? Even worse, Israel didn't want to save us, but the activists from Beta Israel community Beta Israel, for whom we don't know, is the name that we called ourselves in Ethiopia. Others, wow. other non-Jewish neighbor called yeah. us Falasha. Great. Um, Beseder? Our, our activists with white Jewish activists from North America, you're probably familiar with uh, AAEJ, American Association for Ethiopian Jews, and American and Canadian Association for Ethiopian Jews, both work hard to advocate for us, to push Israel to save us from the disaster of Sudan. Thousands died in Sudan because, because of a long waiting time in bad conditions. Because of disease and hunger, I guess some of you know, I recognize the, the face here. Many suffer from trauma. Israel didn't act. Israel didn't act fast. Israel claimed that there is no way to get the Jews out from Sudan. Fortunately, our activists, the Ethiopian activists, with their white Jewish partners, talked louder and said, it looks like racism. I'm speaking about the 80s, right? You guys should go search in the AHS archive and read the research of Hen Tenenbaum and the work that Dani Admasu, my friend, does currently. 
I read and I was shocked. They, they did everything they can in order to stop our Aliyah. The same thing happened in the, like in the 90s. Once again, we needed with our partners to fight with mostly Americans, American partners, also some were Israelis. Susan Pollack, you, some of you probably know her. She was one of them, a strong one and really very, I mean, a lot of people from our community call her Ima, like a mother of a lot of Ethiopians. She invests a lot of time and energy in Addis Ababa when Israel refused to, to let us to come. Uh, finally, the, the oppression of Solomon happened when 15,000 of our community were brought in by plan in two days. Amazing. I mean, really amazing. Israel for, for decades tells this specific story. Israel hides our own contribution, hides our real heroes. I'm telling that I really prepare another presentation. I'm telling that because I see that film and I, I, I rethink about things and they say, it's so deep. It's not about what's happening now in school. It's not about racism in workplace. It's about something deeper about our relationships, like the, state, the relationship between us and state of Israel, actually opposite, the relationship of the state of Israel to us. I want to like stop here because Nir told me that I'm the first one and I want to give you like a little bit numbers what we are talking about regarding the community here in Israel. We are speaking only about 154,000 of the community here in Israel. And 65 of them born here. They are Tzabas, right? 65,000. Uh, 65,000, Ken, Ken. And I can say generally as a, as a educator who deal a, a lot with school, most of the kids, Ethiopian kids, in school, they born here or came very little. So they're almost suburbs. But always they feel olim. They feel like a newcomer. They feel because, you know, the mechanism, the teachers, I don't know, the, the, the colleagues uh, treat them like that. Um, because of the color, it's obvious, but I want to say that. Because of the color, they can't really pass. They can't really be like a just Israeli. Like I have my four kids. They are, I mean, they are Israeli, of course. Um, I mean, if they, if they would white, nobody would know that, that their family came from Ethiopia. But even for them, I say even for them because we are, we are the middle class family here and our kids are studying very, very like a high quality schools, but still when walk uh, on, the, on the street, people treat them like they just came from Ethiopia today. And they, you know, the, the whole thing that they have in their imagination. Um, I, a month ago, probably near now, um, Rupin College published a big research um, about the situation, like a school achievement a situation of the Ethiopian community, Ethiopian kids. And I was not shocked because I really know, but still the, the thing is in one side you see like 
advancement you see in more and more uh, Ethiopian origin, like Israeli kids, Ethiopian origin, uh, pass the matriculation exam. Uh, but when you look like deeper, you see that there is a, a kind of uh, uh, false advancement. For example, for example, in in math, five point, it's like a highest point, just forty six. 46 from almost 3,000 Ethiopian kids, like Israeli Ethiopian origin, right? I mean, it's nothing, it's something in English. Most of them do shalosh, like three point or four point. Most, most is three point. I don't know how it's in America or Canada and other countries in Israel, if you have matric matriculation exam, three point mathematics math and three point English and you don't have uh, physics or you have just three point physics, I can tell what kind of a subject he can take from university and I can tell he cannot really enter to university. They can go to the, the low level college. I'm, I'm not speaking about newcomers, like people that have problem with language, they just got it. No, 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 no. I'm speaking about kids who born here and we, we would say, okay, we are already four decades here, 30 decades here, three decades here and two decades. I, I, would, see, I, I would think that we will have uh, like a better achievement, but there is, there is a lot of false story around this I, and I invite, I think it's in Hebrew right now, but I guess they will have uh, English version and I, I invite you to read it. Um, I, I want to say one more information, very, very sad information from police report. Listen carefully. We are speaking about 150 thousand people here and 24,000 of the community have criminal files. It's new, I didn't know that. I knew that just last few months by mistake, I got this report. I didn't know that. I know that we as a community have extra problem <laughs> with Mishtara, like with police organization. And they knew, uh, we, we all know about profiling. And uh, somebody mentioned uh, Marla, I think, uh, um, George Floyd before. You know, the history of America, the history of Black America, African American is different, but the phenomenon of profiling and how the mechanism of police work is, um, I'm not sure if there is a big difference. And the sign of like a color, like the, like several times, especially in Corona, stopped my son because we live not in the uh, slums neighborhood. We live in Baca, if people know, in Jerusalem. And in, in the policeman mind, if, if a meet go around here in Baca, something bad happened. He probably wants to do something like something bad. And he stopped him and asked him questions. Why? My son cannot walk around freely? But this thing, it's in, it's their, in their mind and they become uh, um, act of, uh, of stopping and beating and, you know, killing as Yuda or Solomon or Yosef Salamsa. Um, and I want to close this part and say, I spoke about the past, about our Aliyah, to show the connecting about our reality now. And now, uh, Nir, if you can share my uh, video. And uh, please, please, please write down questions, comments, everything, and I will give time for discussion.
everybody can uh, see the video. Okay, I'm starting. שולה. שלום. מה העניינים? בסדר. יש לך דקה? כן, כן. אז עכשיו כאילו, אחרי שערכנו כמעט את, את כל הפרק, mm-hmm. אני פתאום הבנתי שאת השאלה הכי חשובה לא שאלתי אותך. שאימה? באיזה רגע הבנת שאת היכולת הזו שיש לך להסתכל לאנשים בעיניים ולהגיד בדיוק את מה שאת חושבת, את יכולה לנצל לא רק כדי להגן על עצמך, אלא גם כדי לשנות משהו בעולם. On May 25th, 1991, one of the most moving stories in modern Jewish history reached its climax. In one 24-hour period, 14,400 Jews were airlifted to Israel from war-torn Ethiopia. joining 35,000 of their brothers and sisters who had immigrated to Israel during the previous decade. For hundreds, if not thousands of years, these Jews had dreamed of Zion. In their dreams, Israel was a place of spiritual perfection and justice, where they would finally cease to live as a minority and would no longer be called Falasha, intruder, as they had been in Ethiopia. Israeli officials and Jewish leaders hailed the airlift as proof positive that Zionism and racism had nothing in common. כשהייתי בן שש, אבא שלי ואישה צעירה בשם שולה מולה עשו סרט על הנוער האתיופי בישראל. עובדים איתנו, הם, הם אנשים... 24 שנים אחר כך הצטרפנו לשולה כדי לראות לאן האקטיביסטית הלוחמנית של אז הגיעה היום. בשיחה עם ישראלי אני פתאום יכולה להיזכר בפתגם רלוונטי מאתיופיה. ואני אומרת את זה באמהרית. אז שולה, מה זה אוכלת אש? קצת פלאש. זה לא ביטוי מחמיא במיוחד. זה מישהי ש... לא מתביישת, לא מפחדת, לא שמה על אף אחד, לא שמה בעלה. במקור הוא לא מחמיא, לי זה מחמיא, וואלה, אוכלת האש מצוין, כאילו, הכי חזק. לגמרי. כן. לגמרי. אבל הפתעת אותי הרגע. בתרבות האתיופית, הערך החשוב ביותר הוא הכבוד לזולת, הכבוד למבוגרים ולהורים. סבא שלי היה אחד החזקים, באמת לא מסתכלים על הפנים שלו, מרוב יראת כבוד. ואולי גם פחד. ואני, לא נראה לי, אני אומרת, אמרתי לו דברים, כן. בתור ילדה קטנה? בתור ילדה, ממש פיצית, וזה היה מאוד קשה לאמא שלי. את זוכרת אה, כשהגעתם? כן. <laughs> אהבת את זה שקיבלת שם חדש? כן, מאוד, 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 מאוד. וגם שולה, זה נשמע לי טוב. שמי באתיופיה ננית, ובארץ שונה לשולה. בהתחלה שמחתי על השינוי, כי זה היה חלק מהחיים החדשים בארץ. אבל אחר כך רציתי את שמי המקורי, וניסיתי לחזור אליו. אבל זה כבר לא היה אני. המקום הראשון של ארץ ישראל שהגעתי אליו, זה הבית הראשון שלנו. זה היה אה... ארץ ישראל מבחינתכם. זה ארץ ישראל, כל הקופסאות האלה, זה ארץ ישראל. באמת. כן, כן. פעם הייתי קוראת להם עיניים, כל כך הרבה עיניים לבניין. שלנו זה גובה. בבתים בקיבל קטנים גם, אבל החיים לא מתקיימים בתוך הדבר הקטן, בתוך הביקטות באתיופיה, זה בחוץ. ופה הכי, הכי, הכי לא בחוץ שי
מה, מה בעצם כן היה? אני זוכרת עובדת סוציאלית רזה, גבוהה, עם צמא, פלונדינית ארוכה, לוקחת אותי ביד, מביאה אותי עד לפה באוטובוס. השאירה אותי עם התיק הקטן שהיה לי, הלכה. זהו. אה, כמה בכיתי. שבועות. <laughs> כן. געגעת? כן. גם לא ידעתי איפה אני, לא, למה אני פה ומי האנשים האלה. ואז פגשתי עוד בנות אתיופיות, ואז גם הן בוכות, אז גם אני בוכה, אז כולנו בוכות. <laughs> היו בנות שההורים שלהן היו בסודאן או באתיופיה, או מתו, או כל מיני, וואו, היה קשה. כמה, כמה זמן היית פה? שש שנים, מכיתה ז' עד י"ב. בדרך לשאפתנות שלנו ולידיעה שנצליח, עמדו מכשולים. לא האמינו שאנחנו מסוגלים. בתקופת לימודיי באולפנה קיבלתי ציון 84 באחד המבחנים שלי בהיסטוריה. המורה חקר אותי ליד מי ישבתי בבחינה ולא האמין שהייתי מסוגלת להגיע לציון הזה בעצמי. אז באותו זמן רצית להיות ישראלית כשהיית פה. רצית? בוא, כן, כן, לגמרי. ולא סתם ישראלית. כמוהם. מקפידה קלה כבחמורה, זה חינוך, אה, חינוך שוטף מוח. בקטע בין... של... אנחנו כולנו, כל הציונות הדתית, זה, 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 זאת ישראל, אלו הישראלים, והאמנתי את בזה. ובי"א היה, היה מקרה שנשארתי פה שבת, ורציתי, כיוון שהייתי חזקה, רציתי לעשות קידוש. וחברה, ילדה אחרת באה, טאק, לוקחת את הכלי, את הכלי של הקידוש, את הכוס של הקידוש. ומסתכלת עליה, היא אומרת לי, את לא יכולה להוציא אותי ידי חובה, להוציא אותנו ידי חובה. עכשיו, אני מבינה מה זה אומר. אני לא יכולה להוציא, אני לא יכולה להוציא אותה ידי חובה כי אני לא מספיק יהודייה. אוקיי? אם... זה היה מין רגע מכונן. הלכתי לשיחה יזומה מצידי עם ראש האולפנה, עם הרב קליין, שבשבילי זה היה חצי אלוהים. ובשיחה התלוננתי על כל מיני דברים, שחברות אומרות לנו ככה, עושות לנו ככה, נה 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 נה, ושחושבות שאנחנו לא יהודיות, ומספרת לו כל מיני וזה, אז הוא אמר, שולינקה, כאילו, מה את מדברת? אתם דם מדמנו ובשר מבשרנו. אמרתי לו, כן? בעזרת השם, רב קליין, אני רוצה לשאול אותך, כשתהיה לי בת בעזרת השם. אתה תסכים שהיא תתחתן עם הבן שלך, עם אסף? שתק. ואז הוא אמר, תשמעי, אתם בגלל, לא זוכרת בדיוק מה הוא אמר, צריך לעבור גיור לחומרה. אבל זה, כאילו, מבחינתו זה לא בעיה לעבור גיור לחומרה. לא המשכתי את השיחה, קמתי, אמרתי לו, תודה רבה, רב קליין. הלכתי. סוג ב', נראה לך, אני רוצה להיות סוג ב', תחפש את החברים שלך. באיפשהו בנובמבר, אני חושבת, 94, ראיתי פרסום על הכנס של עמותת הילה לקידום שוויון בחינוך בשכונות. הלכתי להגיד לשר החינוך מה לא בסדר. כאילו שאני צריכה להגיד לו כדי שהוא ידע שיש בעיה. שם סימנתי את עצמי בפומבי, בציבור, כמישהי שכועסת, שרוצה לעשות משהו עם הכעס שלה. אז איפה כן התחלת להרגיש כאילו שאת בת המקום? זה ממש תהליך ארוך מאוד. היום אני מסתובבת במרחב כבעלת המקום. לא מזמן, לפני שנתיים, שלוש, עצרה אותי איזו זקנה נחמדה ב... ברחוב שמעון, ואמרה לי שיש לה בגדים, היא בדיוק מחליפה את ה... <laughs> ויש לה בגדים לתת לי. עכשיו, אם יש לי מצב רוח, אני הולכת עם זה, זה בדיחה, זה צחוק שלך. אבל אם אני ממהרת ואין לי מצב רוח, זה... מה שבא לי לעשות זה אחת כזאת, להחטיף לה. דברים פשוטים, כמו למשל, וואי, איזה עברית יפה יש לך, כמה שנים את בארץ? אז ז- זאת שאלה שבדיוק מערערת את המקומיות שלי. ואז אני צריכה מיד לעשות מהלך של מטוטל. עכשיו, זה, זה בדיוק המקומות והמילים והפניות שמסרבות לתת לי להרגיש מקומית. שכל הזמן לשים אותי באיזה מקום שצריך, שנזקק, שחדש, שלא ממוקם עדיין. 
לא שייך ממש. בשלוש שנים האחרונות אני עובדת בתוכנית שנקראת לימוד משותף. אנחנו בעצם מנסים לעבוד על התנאים שמאפשרים לימוד משותף בין בתי ספר יהודים וערבים. ואנחנו מנסים ל- ל- להטמיע את זה, להגיד מה הם אותם עקרונות ש- שאם אנחנו עובדים לפיהם, זה יעבוד לנו. והתוכנית הזאת עוברת דרך עבודה מקדימה. עם מנהלים יהודים וערבים, וגם צוותי מורים שלהם, שבעצם אני, אני עושה את, ה, את ההנחיה של הקבוצות האלה. באופן קבוע, החברים ממערב העיר מסרבים לדבר על ההקשר החברתי-פוליטי הרחב, הם אומרים, לא, אנחנו לא עושים פוליטיקה כאן, לא פוליטית, אנחנו רק חינוך. חבר'ה, יש לזה קונטקסט. יש לזה הקשר, כאילו נורא ברור, נורא בולט. אנחנו לא יכולים שלא להתייחס לזה. ואלה אומרים, לא, אז בואו נדבר על פדגוגיה, על שיטות לימוד, איך אתם עושים דברים נהדרים ממעט. לא, אז למה יש להם מעט? כל כך מעט. נורא לא נעים להם שהערבים, נגיד, מתייחסים אליהם כאל נציגים של הריבון. נציגים של האגמוניה, נציגים של מי שמנהל את הכל. הם אומרים, לא, אני רק מורה, או אני רק מנהלת, זה לא בידיים שלי. ואיך הם מתייחסים אלייך בהקשר הזה? אני חלק מהאגמוניה. זה בדיוק הנקודה שבה אני מודעת לפריבילגיות שלי כ... כיהודייה, כ... כאזרחית עם תעודה זו כחולה ודרכון ישראלי. זה, זה ביג דין, זה פריבילגיות. מי שזה מובן מאליו, זה בלתי נתפס. פעם אחת הם מתייחסים אליהם כאל שחורה, והם גזענים, הרבה מהם סופר גזענים, והם... אבל, אבל זה לא תופס, בגלל שמה שקובע זה הכוח. בסופו של דבר המעמד שלי הרבה 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 יותר גבוה. לכן אני מיד משובצת איפה שאני אמורה להיות משובצת. מה זה אומר גם להיות אישה בקונטקסט הזה? Mm. קודם כל אני אגיד כאישה, אני, אני צריכה נגיד, נראה לי לחבר תפילה חדשה שאני פה בישראל. בסדר צינון. אני חושבת שאני נולדתי מרדנית. אני חושבת. <laughs> תחשוב מה זה מרדנית ב- בכפר באתיופיה, באמת. זה, זה צריך לעצב את הדבר הזה. כשאתה מעצב דבר כזה, אתה מפעיל כוח. אתה כוח, כוח מילולי, כוח נפשי, כוח פיזי. אז אני חושבת שהיו מרביצים לי הרבה. <תנשיח> הייתי מתחתנת, כי, כי, כי באו לבקש את ידי לפני שעלינו. זה, זה גיל שהם מתחתנים. 12 זה גדולה, אישה תכף. אז אני אומרת, ברוך השם שאני... <laughs> למרות הרב קליין, למרות קריית גת, למרות זה עדיין ברוך השם. ברור, ברוך השם שאני פה. ו... ובחרתי את האיש שלי, בחרתי איש שאוהב מה שאני, מי שאני. גם זה, זה, פה צריך, אני לוקחת קרדיט על הבחירה, אבל צריך גם הרבה מזל. <laughs> <laughs> צריך גם הרבה מזל. <laughs> כן. <laughs> ואני חושבת שנשים היו מנהלות את הכל יותר טוב. אני נשבעת לך, אני, אני, אני בטוחה בזה. משהו במקום הזה. צריך מקום אחר של מגע, של מפגש, ש, שרואה את האחר. שאני רואה ילדים שזה, שזה מרגיש לי ילדים שלי. גם אם הוא פלסטיני, משועפאט או מג'בל מוכבר. הוא מרגיש לי, כשאני רואה ילד עם דמעה, זה מרגיש ילד שלי. אני לא אומרת שלא צריך להיות רציונלי, אבל התשוקה הכי גדולה, שהילדים שלי יתקיימו ברווחה, ש, שלא יכאב להם. אז אני רוצה שלא יכאב לו גם. וזה, וזה צריך להיות הרצון הבסיסי של מי שמנהל. הרבה פעמים אמרו לי כשעשיתי, השתתפתי במאבקים שהם לא שלי, שהם לא אתיופים. אמרו לי, בזמן שהקדרה שלך נשרפת, את הולכת לה, להציל או לערבב כן. בקדרה של האחרים? זה לא יעזור שאני איאבק על הקהילה האתיופית. זה לא יעזור. כי הרע שם, מי שרע לערבים, הוא רע אלינו גם. מי שרע למבקשי המקלט זה ידוע. מי שלא אוהב שחורים, אפריקאים אחרים, הוא לא אוהב שחורים אתיופים. בסופו של דבר, המקום הזה הוא, הוא בחזקת קדרה גדולה. ואנחנו כולנו 
צריכים לעבוד כדי שהקדרה הזאת לא תצטרף לגמרי. ואני נמצאת שם. אני, אני רוצה לדאוג שהקדרה לא תצטרף. שלום, שלום. חזרנו. I'm back. אוקיי. So I guess we have 15-20 minutes for questions and discussion. אוקיי. אוקיי. Yeah, I just want to say a few sentences before. This video created about four years ago, probably five, I don't remember. Um, I'm not the same person now. I'm, uh, I would say I'm not smarter, but I'm more, I have more anger now. I have um, more sadness and full energy, full energy to act, to change. Uh, I, I saw I saw again with you this uh, this movie and say oh so sweet Shula so naive yeah I'm I'm less naive now okay I'm open for question and I saw few questions before about the language I we 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 study Hebrew here most of the community I know some people especially from Ambover one of the uh, village in Ethiopia uh, that uh, they, they had connection with uh, Israel more than others, not just Tambover, also other few villages, they, they, know, they knew a little bit Hebrew. Uh, from my village, from where I came, we don't, we don't know Hebrew. I didn't know Hebrew, I just learned here. Another question was about uh, how, if we live like uh, together with, uh, with the whole communities, with uh, right, the other Israeli population, the answer is yes, sure, of course, we are struggling, but yeah, we, 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 live, we live together. And uh, I, I can say also, people like to hear that, 13% uh, of the community have uh, intermar not intermarriage, mixed marriage, like uh, Ethiopians with non-Ethiopians, Moroccan, Ashkenazim and others. Uh, there is, yeah, we, we, we are here. And uh, as I told to the guy in the movie, I personally, I feel local. I feel like this is my home, this is our home. And I'm struggling from this uh, position. Uh, this is my home and, and I, I need to work for uh, better opportunities. More questions. Uh, I, I want to say that uh, it's, I think it's better if you will uh, ask uh, if, if you want by... Uh, uh, chat? From, no, from your microphone, not by chat, that anyone can... Uh, yeah, I, actually I prefer to hear. Yeah, to hear the question. I hear better than read. Yeah. Okay. There, there was a question that Judy Newman shared. What, why, if you can tell us more about why you're more angry and sad now and what do you feel you were naive about before? What, what do you feel less naive about in the three to four years since that film was made? Okay. Um, the turning point of uh, time, period of time, the strong one, was when Yuda Berge killed by policemen in Batyam. I mean, I heard before that, I knew about other young Ethiopians who, kill, who, who was killed, were killed by policemen, but I didn't really imagine, I didn't know deep about specific things about that uh, phenomenon, but Regarding Yuda Biadge, I just know every moment and everything that happened there. More, more I learn, I feel sad and angry, very angry. 
the story is Yoda Biadge had a um, mental problem and he went out with a knife and a prey book, Sidur. And he was like, he was, he was in, in problem, you know. And uh, his family called to the police station four times and told Yuda Badge is sick. He went with knife and they didn't come. And Yuda Badge keep going around streets in Batyam. He didn't hurt any, anyone during that 51 minutes, almost hour. And uh, the family, the members of the Yoda Berge family told uh, to the police uh, station, they told exactly where, like a GPS, where, where exactly Yoda is. And they knew exactly. But they, they came, two police came, one go to meet the family. The other police went to the place that Yoda Biadge was there. And uh, the person, one, one of the friend of Yuda Biadge told that police, he knew Yuda Biadge, there is Yuda Biadge. It's about 100 meters from Yuda Biadge. And Yuda Biadge was in his back to the police. What happened is policeman came very close to Yuda Biadge and he became in front of Yuda Biadge. Very dangerous. Yuda Biadge was, was with knife. And this policeman, shoot Yuda Biadge twice, twice on his chest. He doesn't need to do this. I mean, he has different opportunities and different uh, solutions before that. He can shoot to his leg. He can just try to shoot before, D different things. Why twice? One and Another one. Not just that, this policeman uh, didn't let the person, she was a kind of a nurse in the, she lives like she saw this thing from her apartment and she came down and she wants to help. And the policeman didn't let her to help Yuda Biadge. And the policeman didn't stop the blood of Yuda Biadge and Yuda Badge died. It's not the end of the story. This policeman go back to his police station, sit with his friends, and he wrote the report about what's happening in his, you know, his, his story. And he sent this report to Mahash. Mahash is an investigation department police investigation department. And Mahash got this report and didn't invite this person for investigation, this policeman. And Mahash decided that the police investigation department decided not open the file. And there's a lot of questions why. Somebody died. There is a lot of problems, a lot of Kind of a mistakes. Sure, the policeman said that Yuda attacked him, right? Yeah, he he yeah. The policeman said he was in risk. In his life was in risk, but we know he he didn't need to come too close to him and why twice. You know, yeah. If you know, I, I understand. Like, if yeah, you like you said before, the family. The family called to the police to tell them that we have our son that is mental and he went <laughs> out of the house with a knife and we want to, to, to his health, you to stop him. So the police came and not to stop him, to shoot him. <laughs> and they came. I remember, I remember the story also, of course, but I, I want to, 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 clarify, to do a clarification that the family called the police to, to help them. With, with, our, with their son that is mental and went out from the house with a knife and the police came and saw an Ethiopian guy in the street with a knife that he knew is mental. And instead of uh, trying to, uh, to stop him 
or to take the knife from him, he shot him twice in the chest. And, and first, they came just after 51 minutes, you know? Okay. If, so I, if I would machash, if I would machash, like the investigation uh, department, I would ask question about that. How come? And how come that just one policeman go to Yehuda why he, we want too close to him? Why twice to shut him? Why to, why to shut him on his chest? There is a lot of questions. Why I'm sad? Not just because you were killed by policemen, because the investigation, the uh, uh, police investigation department didn't want to check. And I don't have any other reasons except the reason that because Yuda was black and mental ill. And half a half year after, we got something else in Haifa with Solomon Taka, killed by policemen. That's why I'm sad. And I'm not naive because I understood more and more that we have deeper problem, not with the Israeli population. We have problem with the DNA of the state of Israel. The DNA is against black people. They don't, they didn't want us. They don't want us. They don't deal well with us now. And they want to fight against that. And I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I find, I found, and still find a lot of Israelis, white Israelis, who realized that problem and they fight like we are, they are with us. They are our, our partners. And I want to say another the sentence now in this position of my life, I'm very privileged and I have time to be activist. I work part time and 50, I, I would say like 50% of my life is like to do activism, to fight, to fight against this racist establishment, I want to change it. I'm local, I feel local, and my children is local, and I want to create a better place for them. This is my mission. How do you get most Israelis to get to actually know you and your community, the, the humanity of you? The, how do you go around and, and speak with people so they can meet you and other members of the Ethiopian communities? It's it's a big challenge, really big challenge. Uh, I personally meet a lot of uh, people who has uh, criticism about, about our uh, system. And I, I met them in uh, protests and I speak with them and I share my story. And there is a common because uh, uh, the, the system is bad, not just for us. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's more extreme regarding our community, but there is a lot of communities who, who more and more communities that they feel the system is not fair, the system is not good. And you see, we have four elections, something with the leaders really bad. Uh, so this one thing, another thing I'm, I'm a educator and I meet, I meet teachers. I meet around hundred, more than hundred. I mean, in a year I can say five, 600 teachers that I meet with that, with a kind of this kind of issues of uh, shared life, uh, to how to build shared, uh, like to shared society, uh, how to deal with uh, racism in class, uh, how to create like the empathy, empathy abilities for teachers and for kids. So I deal with this in, in different aspect. And recently, and Nir knows that because we we start to 
uh, to be a partner. Recently, like recently, I mean like two year, last two years, three years, uh, I also decided and I realized that we have to learn more about our heritage uh, in order to build like uh, um, um, the hood. Identity. identity, stronger yeah. identity. We have to we have to know more about our heritage, our roots, our story. Um, as I didn't, maybe I didn't tell enough. But the thing is, the Israeli uh, education uh, minister office, the, the the educational system here, um, they don't really include us as as a story you now as a um as a as a material that every kid in israel should to know so also i i try to do something about this and we have and more and more initiatives one of us uh, this this home like uh atagid atagid is one of the one of the i would say solution or one of the ways that people other israelis can learn more and they they give a lot of lectures, not like my lecture, uh, other lecture about our culture, about our uh, values, about our stories. So they can they can they can come and learn more. And also has a, a lot of initiatives. Uh, besides the, the bad things about the uh, the criminal files I just mentioned about the, our struggle, I also see more and more young Ethiopian who return to to our own roots and our own culture and very creative very very a lot of artists so there is a lot of good things and this is a, i think this is a time we have we have used in different strategies and uh, and uh, directions in order to get our 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 place and our position here in our home I think Shula, if you if you let me uh, complete uh, to to say uh, uh, if it's okay by you, that uh, the main purpose of the targid is this: to change the narrative, to change not only to tell the story, to tell the right story, not the story that the state of Israel is telling about the Ethiopian uh, Aliyah, but the right story that the Ethiopian Aliyah is a Zionist uh, Aliyah. Uh, and not uh, Aliyah that uh, the good state of Israel uh, uh, do, us, do the Ethiopian jury a favor and uh, brought her from, uh, from Africa. No, it was a Zionist Aliyah that wanted to come here and came here by her uh, power. And this is the first thing. And I think the main purpose of the Tagid is to do this, to change the story, to tell the right story. And we are bringing more and more uh, information the right information. A lot of people get the wrong information about Dalia and about the Ethiopian uh, community. Uh, and, and, and our purpose is to get the right to the Israelis, to the Israeli public, to bring them the right information about the Ethiopian uh, Jewry community here in uh, Israel. Uh, you so think I, the, the main purpose of the Dagid? What's that? Tagid. Tagid. Uh, it's a uh, tagid is like a, a government uh, organization. The, uh, the main purpose of of the of our uh, organization is uh, to take the history and the uh, and the heritage of the Ethiopian jury and bring it to the Israeli uh, people, but bring the uh, right uh, uh, story, not the wrong story that the state of Israel is telling that uh, the, 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 the wrong narrative that the state of Israel is telling. The state of Israel has a narrative that is wrong, is wrong from its basis. And what Shula said before about the DNA, I thought uh, she's like reading my mind because this is the problem. The DNA, the DNA of this country is racism about uh, the Ethiopian uh, community. And, and, and I want to say one more thing that Israel is a country on, that is built on immigration from the first day. A lot of community came here from all over the world. The only community that the state of Israel as a state told her that they are not sure is Jewish or not is the Ethiopian Jewry. 
the only community. None of the other communities that came to Israel from the Soviet Union, from Romania, from North Africa, Morocco, and all the other countries, none of them. Nobody asked those people if they are Jewish, are you sure you are Jewish? The only community that the, the state, as a state, not the, the people in the street, the state, ask them, are you sure you are Jewish? You need to convert. You are not really Jewish. Only the, the Ethiopian Jew, the only one. So I think this is the main problem. So it, it, it's the DNA. Uh, so, and, and, and I wanted to say the last thing that from my perspective, like you see, I'm not Ethiopian. And uh, I live- You are our, you are our partner. <laughs> And I live in Give a Time, that is a, a city near to Tel Aviv with 60,000 people, a, a high class city, I will call it. And I have two daughters. And if I will raise my daughters uh, until they were 18 here in Give a Time, I will guess they will not see an Ethiopian in their life. You asked before if the Ethiopian community lives in, uh, in together. No, they, not, they, they go around all over the country, but in the, the, the distressed uh, area, in the, in the, in, because when they came here, in the Aliot, the state put them there. They didn't put them in Giva Time or in uh, Tel Aviv or in the, the high uh, society places. They put them there. And my daughter, that now is five years old, she don't know there is black Jews because she don't see it and she will not if she will raise in, and then she will get to 18 and she go to the army. And then in the first time of her life, she will see, oh, wow, the Jews, they are black, they are different from me. So the, uh, so the, this is my perspective on my daughter. And I'm taking, my, I'm not taking my daughter to, to but, but I, I wanted to show her and I wanted to, 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 to explain to her from, from this age, there is a lot of kind of people in, in this country, but most of the people didn't, don't do it. And, and this is what creates the, the racist DNA. And this is what creates the, the um, so this is what I want to say and uh, to complete uh, Shula uh, uh, stuff that she said before. And uh, I think we have time for one, two questions more. Yeah, somebody us give a comment. I, I don't know how to read the name, but uh, about the Mizrahim. Uh, I, I, you, I guess you know about the uh, Black Panthers, Mizrahi Black Panthers. It's about that, about, about uh, discrimination against people from North Africa. Yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it, as I told you before, uh, the the behavior of discrimination of the Israeli establishment is not uh, created just now against us, as I said before. It's extreme to us because what Nir told before from the beginning, like he mentioned the the that the Israeli government uh, demand from us to to convert again to like. You know, it's very deep, but the discrimination, yes, <laughs> a lot. And now we have uh, partners with Mizrahi uh, fourth generation, because we still see the result of that discrimination and this, that discrimination keeping going now also about uh, housing, about, uh, I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't want to open it, but there is a lot of a lot of issues here about Ashkenazi Mizrahim and others. Yeah, and Haredim. <laughs> uh, sure, there was a, one more question before that uh, that someone asked if about the politics, if there is a Ethiopian politics. So of course the immigration minister today is an Ethiopian, Pnina uh, Tamano Shate, and we have uh, the deputy minister also, right? Yeah, Gadi Varkin. He's uh, yeah, home yeah. And, uh, security. Uh, yeah. Uh, the uh, maybe you will tell them 
what is the influence about a, a minister in the immigration office that it came came from Ethiopia? Um, from my perspective, she does a better job than uh, Gadi Varkan. Um, not just because she's smarter than him, it's because Gadi is in the a most ugly organization, like Mishtara, police, the whole issue. I'm not saying that the, the reason of our problems, Mishtara, but in police, but uh, the extreme problematic and danger place for us is Mishtara, police, and he's there, and he's not strong enough to help. They just use him to do whatever they did before. The so, silent I think, and to, to, to silence the community. We put in Ethiopian in Homeland Security that is in charge of the police. Now yeah. you can't uh, say that there is a racism because- No power, he yeah. is no, no power. And I'm not, I'm not blaming him. I mean, no. he can't change there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's bigger than what he can do there. Um, Shula, I have two short questions and one just a little bit longer, if that's okay. Um, so the first one was that I wonder if it's possible to put on the website um, the how we can find the movie um, land, uh, without land, because I tried to find it online, I couldn't. Mm -hmm. um, I ask, I ask Kalamork. And that would be great, thanks. I'm a Siganalu. Um, <laughs> I, I wanted to ask Nira also, do you have any of the material from what was first Betachin and then Baharachin? Because I was involved a little bit in trying to get material to them. About what? I didn't hear, sorry. Betachin and Baharachin, the two previous organizations that were about. No, I don't have. I, 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 I will ask to, to the first question. I put the link to the YouTube uh, uh, movie that we, we showed before in the chat so you can copy it. <laughs> if you want. No, to. she's asking. She's asking about the uh, Lelo Adama ah, the movie okay. I just mentioned from. Okay. Oh, I see. I see. So you can uh, find maybe I don't know if there is in the US or uh, the uh, app of Khan uh, Khatesh. They they have an app, and we have they have all the uh, the TV show that was on there. And about your the other question, no, I'm sorry, I don't have the. We don't have connection with those organizations. Uh, Marla, you wanted to say something? I like wanted that? to, um, I mean, I know our time is up. I wanted to, first of all, thank Shula for sharing a very personal story that has um, both gave me both hope because of your activism and your working with teachers and children and engaging with Israeli society. And we really, we know from our lives that that's absolutely critical, but also um, wanted to know what, if anything, is there that um, North American Jews can do or know to, um, to partner with you for those who are interested um, or with Hatagid? Is there anything that, um, that you would want to suggest? I mean, we're not here, we're here as friends and learners. So I, I I want to jump in and answer my my give my answer. Historically, without American Jews, we couldn't do it. I know that I'm sure. And somehow American Jewish community stop to uh, I mean they help us to get here. They we, they did they help with the advocacy work and and that. Once we got here. They went to sleep. No, don't sleep, ask questions. Demand answers. Tell what you want to see here in our country as, 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 a, as a Jewish people. That's the basic thing that you guys, I mean, everyone can do it. Uh, educate yourself more and more to get uh, the insight of the problems. It's not, it's not, just that the, the Ethiopian live in the slums and no, it's not enough. We have to learn more how this mechanism makes this stuff, you know? And uh, 
yeah, you can, נכון, uh, you can help to the תאגיד more, and we have more culture, more heritage, more activities to like for us, for the Ethiopians, for our kids, also for others. We have a lot to give, באמת, we have a lot to give. Thank you. And I just wanted to say, Mara, I'm stopping you for yeah. one second. Yeah. I, I put the link to the movie uh, in the Khan uh, website uh, in the chat, so you can copy it. Great, I've copied it. And um, Nir, if people want to learn more about Hatagid, I know you okay. have a Facebook page in Hebrew. We have a I Facebook have a link. Page. Is there any other connections we should know about? So we have a Facebook page that you can uh, find it. It's in Hebrew, so most of our content is now in, in Hebrew. We, do, we don't have a website. It's been in work for like a year now, but I, 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 will, I hope it will be in a few months, and then it will be in English also, uh, and of course in Hebrew. Um, we have, I, I, I would say that most of our activity now is in Hebrew. So uh, if you are looking for an information in English, Uh, you can ask Mara uh, my mail and ask and, and just send me an email and I will I will reference you to to an information uh, if you're looking looking for a specific information let me know and I, I can uh, uh, give you um, the the specific information that you are looking for um, and, and and I want to thank sure and it was a I would say to conclusion because I see I, I think we, we have to finish that it, it was my first choice to bring Shula to the first lecture on purpose because the other lecture is very interesting also. But I think the first uh, lecture from Shula is the, is the most important because not because it's about the history of the Ethiopian Jewry. Not because it's about the heritage or about the culture that a lot of other people can do a very good lecture about the subjects. I think because Shula is talking from her heart and, and telling the story in a personal point of view that is very uh, absent in the, in, the, in the story, the personal point of view. Because when people in Israel talk about the, the Ethiopian jury, say, okay, th there is a community. There are a lot of people. They came from... Uh, from They don't look about, about the, per, uh, the, the personal story of each and every one of them. And uh, three weeks ago, we had the Memorial Day of the Ethiopian Jews that came from uh, Sudan and died on the way. And we did a very uh, moving uh, conference about it. And to a woman, it was about a woman uh, bravery, or the whole uh, subject of the day. And we had two women that uh, uh, had the journey from Sudan to uh, Israel and told her story. And, and, and I thought about it after that. It's a horrifying story and how they survive it. And they like 40, 50 years old and they walk down the street after tomorrow and they go to work and they go to, and nobody knows that they uh, had this horrifying experience and story. They look at them and say, okay, they came with an airplane from Ethiopia. And I think the personal story is, is, is the most significant. And, uh, and that's why I wanted uh, Shula to be the first one because I knew it will, be, uh, it will be exactly what it was. And so I want to thank Shula. Uh, Todaraba for this opportunity. Todaraba. The lecture and Marla. And the next lecture, lecture will be on uh, June 16. We have uh, Moria, uh, Moria Tadela. Moria is an Ethiopian uh, young uh, woman that uh, wrote a, a master uh, a degree in uh, Haifa University in uh, education and uh, sociology. And she wrote, the, the uh, lecture will be about secondary tra traumatization among the second generation of Ethiopian Jews exodus via Sudan. Uh, it's a very, very interesting story about the second generation of the, uh, of the people who came from Sudan and uh, uh, via the, the journey from them. And if you have any last question, Omala, you want to say last? No, I think you should 
Thank you. Did, did somebody want to say something? I think I wanted to say thank you. We've taken our time and um, learned a lot. Looking forward to the next few lectures. I will send out the information and the links to, to those of you who um, I have your, your contact information. And uh, we look forward near to the next, so the thank next you very chapter much. of this story. Thank, so you. thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Here is yeah. uh, like uh, eight o'clock in a minute. Uh, so have a wonderful day. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you, Chula. Thank you very much.